Friends don't let friends play a True or false? Depends what your friends are playing for. We'll take it as a true. If I'm if I'm playing a if I'm playing my friend for money, I'm absolutely gonna let him. I'm gonna absolutely <laughs> encourage him. What is up, people? How you living? No putts given. We're back from a week in Orlando. If all things uh, go according to plan, we'll both get the flu or some kind of cold here within a week, and oh, my voice well, is already a little did. shaky, so bear with we me. We made here, it people. out without food poisoning. As far as I know, nobody, yeah. nobody in our group got food poisoning, so big win. Yeah, big win. Maybe, arguably makes it the most successful PGA <laughs> show ever for us. Absolutely. Oh, that will be our God. that will be our biggest topic today. We're, we're going to talk about our thoughts and feelings relative to the PGA show, but before we get into all that stuff... Rumors out there floating around one dear friend, Tyrrell Hatton, signing with Liv, 50 million, 58 million, 60 million. Who knows what the actual number maybe, is? But maybe confirmed by the time this publishes right now. Maybe. But Credible so, rumor phase? How's that? Credible rumor. Let's assume it's true. Is this a big get for Liv compared to the other gets recently? <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, it's it's not John Rom, but if you look at that roster, this is this is certainly a bigger get. He's you know what world world ranking aside um, before it plummets, of course. Uh, he, Terrell is certainly one of the more entertaining golfers to watch. So I, yes. that, I mean that's that's the loss here, I think. Um, yeah, but otherwise, I mean it's again anytime it's just dilute, you're just two diluted products. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I was going to say, I guess, but it's, it's, it's trading a, ver you know, a veritable asset on the P on the PGA tour. Mm -hmm. Absolutely an asset. I mean, if you told me that I could watch live golf and it would be Terrell Hatton unfiltered, mic'd up, I got to be honest with you. I'm watching that. I am absolutely watching Terrell Hatton play a round of golf or two. Doing what he does, because I don't think he's going to change. He no could have his own what. YouTube channel. Yes. I would watch that. Golfers would watch that. Non-golfers would watch that. It's a loss for the PJ Tour. It's a gain. Uh, absolutely a win for Liv. But speaking of losing things, tell me about this Kirkland signature ball real quick, Tony. Just Yeah, so Ball Lab results came in last week. Scored 45 on our 100-point scale, which is... That's not good. On the on the balnamic wind performance scale, that that would still be significantly better than it performs in, in under that particular methodology. It's an interesting one for me because you know when we cut them, it's it's not the worst in terms of things like con concentricity. So based on what sure. we saw when we cut them open, I wouldn't expect them to fly left and right. Um, but based on those same findings, I think your the on course result would be a lot of variation in in sort of that front to back dispersion you're going to get yeah. different you're diff going to get different spins different sizes you're going to have different aerodynamic properties it's essentially like finding you know if you bought a box it would be it would be like finding 12 completely different sort of unique ball models that are all <laughs> at least reasonably well made that that kind of it's that, a combo plate it's a Life's combo like platter. a box of chocolates man so is a box of kirkland's i guess but i'm torn here because on one hand, it, it's it's inarguably bad in terms of the consistency. Like sure. when we when we have to go in and adjust our charts to fit balls on them, I know it's bad. Right. But at the same time, it's an eighteen dollar a dozen ball. Yeah, you, you got to buy two, but factored out eighteen dollars a dozen. And and my my final line thinking on this is, if you were going to spend eighteen dollars on a dozen golf balls at yep. that price point, the odds are you're going to do worse. You're more likely to do worse than a Kirkland than you are to do better at that price point. At that price point. So, so value proposition is definitely if you're not super serious, if you're not always going out there to shoot the lowest score, if you're out there just to have fun, it's probably not the worst thing. If you're out there grinding, trying to shoot low, low, low scores. Or even your, your best, best score. Yeah. yeah it's, it's not where I would go. But again, at the price point, you're probably more yeah. likely to do worse than, than better. Yep, I think to me the biggest as we go down this Kirkland signature rabbit hole of equipment throughout the year, different times, you know, we have to be very careful to 
to look at things where we say, hey, people expect a lot of branded stuff, Kasich branded stuff to be as good as kind of a white label or black label, you know, kind of top tier brand. For example, like Kirkland's uh, extra virgin olive oil, phenomenal. That stuff is straight up 100% made in Italy, coming to you. It's not made in four different countries, but thus far in the golf equipment space, you can't just take that label off and say, oh, it's like a top tier ball from a Titleist yeah, or a Callaway. There's no, or there's no magic in that Kirkland branding. The magic is the price. And so if you are going to go out using your olive oil example, not super familiar with that, but I assume, right, they are, it is being sourced and, and re, relabeled from what is a, a high quality, reasonably high quality based on your estimation, olive Thank oil you. provider. Thank Here you. we know that this ball is being sourced by what is not a first tier, second tier, or even I would argue third tier ball factory. We were into that fourth tier at best. And so the quality is just not going to be there. That is, it's pretty simple. And, and yeah. to make the, to yeah. make that price point, even still, you have to trade something away. And very often that trade away is a little bit on the quality side. You're willing to tolerate a little bit more variability or in, I would argue in some cases a lot more variability to hit a price point. It's just how it is, and that's fine. Just understand what you're getting. You know what it is. What it is. Back in full swing on the PJ Tour and LPG Tours. The years are kicking off, and we're, we're into the continental U.S. now, right? Farmers Insurance <laughs> and Tory, which is good. My French you is You can not get there a, by train now. Did it, you can get there by train now, yeah. Uh, Pavon, maybe I'm saying it right. Maybe I'm Mathieu not. Pavon. Mathieu Pavon. First Frenchman to win the PGA Tour and basically ever. Ping Staffer. Uh, fant- I mean, some people were kind of mocking the leaderboard saying, hey, this looks like a DP <laughs> World Corn Ferry Tour event. Who when I look are at the these guys? But who are these guys? Well, it might be the next wave. We'll see. But historic win for him there. And I know there was football on Sundays. I watched it all, but I did have a separate screen going for the ladies because what? Nellie Corda and Lydia Ko did down the stretch yesterday was absolutely must-see TV. If you are a golf fan and you like watching the best players in the sport do what they do. In the same league. In the same league. At least for now. Hopefully it stays that way. And if you didn't see what Nellie Corda and Lydia Ko did yesterday, you missed out. I'm just telling you that right now. Go I back, mean, Google it, look you at it. You know me. There is, there is nothing I, I love more in professional golf than a Lydia Ko win. She's my absolute favorite. So a little disappointed. Congrats to Nellie on this one. But here, here, let, me, let me throw out a question to you, Chris. I'll throw okay. it out to anybody watching or listening. If we continue, and I think it's safe to predict that we will, continue to see the split between Liv and PGA where the the best players are coin flip right now. You're starting to, as Liv attracts actual talent, does the LPGA become the more compelling professional golf tour? I'm going to say it does. Oh, more compelling on a weekend. I, would, I mean, I'm generally I would say- going to watch LPGA anyway. But yeah, I think I think you want to talk about all the best players competing. Here you I, go. I would say this outside of the majors. So on a week to week basis, I can see the argument for that. I love. I mean, I love watching the LPGA players play. Not because I think anybody that isn't a plus five, plus six handicap, whatever has a snowball's <laughs> chance in the seventh layer of Hades of competing uh, oh with my them. God. Yeah, but I, in terms of swing speed, distances, those type of things, it's far more in line with what most golfers, better amateurs would see as yeah. maybe comparable, right? But on a weekend, weekend, uh, weekend, week out basis, I can see that. I would love seeing the top ladies play every single weekend. It's a very, very compelling product, but I don't know if it's going to hold a candle to Anthony Kim if he comes back. Are people too excited about this, Tony? <laughs> Way too excited. Way too excited. Big belt buckles. I haven't seen him in, he hasn't played competitively in, what, 12 years? But, again, rumored. Rumored. Not confirmed. There's if he... So many rumors. People so too many excited, Tony. Rumors. 
too no, excited? No, I mean, honestly, if Greg Norman, whoever whoever makes these deals for Liv, if you want to give Anthony Kim a one month contract, by all <laughs> means, I think that would be absolutely brilliant. But I think, I think, I think by four weeks in, you realize that he's not competitive. He's not going to be competitive. I mean, how old is he now? Like he's, he's past prime for professional. He could golf. be fifty. He could be twenty-eight. We don't know. He. There, I mean, there's a tremendous article. I would encourage everybody to read it on on Golf Week. Eamon Lynch, which is another fantastic Eamon Lynch that kind of looks at this and sort of from from all perspectives and the reality of, yeah, of yeah. what Anthony Kim's career was versus how how we tend to remember it as, as this it. guy that if if he hadn't hurt his wrist might have been the next Tiger Woods. That's okay. kind of how it gets framed, and you kind of go back and look at how he actually performed in his career. Like, he was we good. Should. He was fun to watch, right? He was kind of the bad boy of the sport, the bad boy in a sport that that doesn't really have bad boys, and so that that made it mm-hmm. compelling, I suppose. But in terms of, you know, career trajectory, it, it's tough to, to kind of make the argument that he yeah. was ever the next big thing. Yeah. May we all be remembered the same way that AK was and or is and you know maybe it's in his best interest not to come back maybe the vision or version that people well, tell them themselves money. I mean, if they're gonna yeah, give him uh, live money to to come back and play whether it's for a season or four weeks whatever like I fired up at this point right it, it, it would be hard to fault him uh, yeah but it would have to be live coming back to the PGA tour not I don't know that. the ins and outs, but it's rumored, right? Like he would have to kind of pay back the insurance money. Yeah, like ten to twelve I, million. Is, yeah. yeah, and I don't know if there's an expiration on that, so that may not be true. But if that is the case, he's not going to get. Liv could cover it. <laughs> Liv yeah, could, he's not. Liv could. PGA Tour is not going to front him that money, and there's certainly no guarantee he'd win it. But if if Liv wants to double it and then some to have him have him show up and yeah, you know, Pat Perez his way around the golf course, more more power to him. Mm-hmm. Speaking of things that we're in the middle of, we weren't, but I was just using that because why not? We're, we're almost in the middle of a podcast. We're almost in the middle of a podcast, but we are almost done with driver testing at our headquarters, which I understand things are going on. So, Bennett, what is going on behind the scenes in HQ? Let us know. Thanks for tossing it over, Chris, and welcome to HQ, guys. I figured I would give you a little bit of a behind-the-scenes look at what's going on here in Yorktown, Virginia. So, as you can see behind me, we are still grinding on Most Wanted Driver Test. We're about 14,900 shots deep, and even though we were at the PGA show, John and Rob, they were totally crushing it. It was jam-packed in here, session to session to session. I think we're about 300 and what, 50 sessions in? We've already started on blade putter testing. It was jam-packed in here this morning too. I was seeing testers in and out. Um, And then Connor over there, he's gonna start bag testing here. uh, So closer to next week. So we've got stand bags, cart bags, Sunday bags, whatever bag you need, he's gonna be testing them. Um, Also in other news, our new facility, which is about two times, if not three times bigger than what we're in right now. That is well on its way to almost being done. And I cannot wait to show you guys the progress that the contractors are making. We went over there this morning and, and let me just say it looks like a completely different place than it did even just a week ago. So super stoked about that. Can't wait to get you guys in there and see what's going on. So I'm gonna hand it back to you, Chris. See you next week. That certainly looks interesting and we will look forward to results as they become available. New equipment stuff came out. There's always, I mean, millions and millions and millions of things. We like can't talk about. a hundred things. A hundred things. A hundred things. Because that's how the PGA show works. Where that's, We are not going to It's not talk everything, about. but it's a lot of the things get saved. And we're not going to talk about all 100. We'll link to them so that if you want to go in depth and read about every single equipment release. We got all that info, all the categories, all the things. But we're going to pick out three or four that might percolate to the top of the interest level. And I'm going to start out with your favorite, Tony. Vokey Wedges. What do we got, I Tony? Love, and uh, why didn't they name a finish after you? That's, yeah. What the hell? Corey. Uh, yeah, Vokey SM10. So as as you might expect, right? Vokey, two-year cycle. Mm-hmm. Been two years since SM9. Mm-hmm. Subtle changes, right? Mm-hmm. Little little movement in CG to kind of bring that get, bring that flight down a little bit. Whole idea of getting fl- the wedges to to fly lower with more spin. 
hit a uh, hit a flight window that's probably lower than most people watching this might think. But uh, you know, it's it's crucial, I think, to get people thinking about that. For me, the the big thing for me was that this time around, every wedge of the same loft has that same shape. And it may sound like a small thing, but if you were looking down, like say back in the day, SM9 and beyond, <laughs> if you looked at a an example I give is like a 60 degree or 58 degree K grind versus a 58 degree T grind. The yep. difference there, that was noticeable. They didn't look the same and you might prefer the way one looked over another. And so that may have steered your decision here. Let's make them all the same. Let's make it about a performance choice instead of a, a visual choice. So lot, lots that went into SM10, of course, but that that to me was is maybe maybe the most important. For you, it's probably the new nickel finish. I was going to say, they, um, you know, every year, you know, sometimes you see tweaks and things. You're a big proponent that there is a slate uh, slate blue finish that they have done at times on a limited run. You've asked, if not begged, for them to bring it back. Why not? Where is... Where's the slate blue and why this, did this they decide piles, to go? This yeah. is just goes under one more thing. Just can, more evidence that nobody actually listens to anything I say. Oh, I think so, they listen. It just means. Well, we did get a T grind in the retail lineup, right? So that's a win for golfers. Yep. I like that. Mm-hmm. 54M in the lineup. I like that. Mm-hmm. I thought that one already was, to be honest yeah, with you. But I was yeah. like, oh, nice. Thought you were L-grind already there. out. I can live with that. Probably be coming to Wedgeworks, and then we just got to get Voki on the on board with the idea of like let, let's make all of these all of these grinds available somehow. There was a just video, right? Billy Horschel did a video where he talked mm-hmm. about moving between the T and the V depending on course mm-hmm. conditions and where he was playing any given week. Yep. Awesome! I love that mindset. I think for golfers trying to get the most out of their wedge game, it makes a lot of sense, especially in that lob wedge space, to kind of. Really think about course decisions on any given day. Mm-hmm. But here we are, SM10. Where's the V grind? Not there yet. Wait and see. Wedge works maybe one day. Come on, guys. Let's 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 make that available day one. I'm just saying. Next. I I do want to point out one more time that the new finish this year is called a nickel finish, and it looks phenomenal. I just I just don't know why they named it after me and not after you. My name is not Tony Slate Blue. Tony it is Blue. now. You're yeah. legally changing your name to Tony Slate Blue, and then we shall do that. Mm. Tony, I'm trying to get in the mindset, I'm trying to visualize good golfing shots. What what product am I talking about, Tony? Well, you just said it. The Bridgestone Mindset Golf Ball, or really, it's it's a a pattern on a golf ball. I don't want to say alignment pattern. It's not an alignment aid because it's meant to set your mindset. You're probably seeing this three circles and I guess arrows pretty wild. So yeah. What's the supposed, to... the first time someone's going to look at this thing, they're going to go, okay. It kind of looks like, yeah. Concentric circles, maybe like a, uh, like a Russian, you know, like the little Russian dolls, like one inside the other, mm, like nesting, nested circles. Yeah. yeah what? So, it's, so what is it? And mindset, what? right? You're supposed to get you in the right frame of mind, help you develop a pre-shot routine, like a tour pro. So green is meant to remind you, identify the target. Um, mm-hmm. it's the hole, not the tree line. Yellow, it's kind of all right. Settle in, repeat the process, validate. I'm sorry, red, I got it backwards. Red, identify, yellow, validate, green. What does green mean? Go. There you go. Seen it on a stoplight, red, yeah. yellow, green. So shift your mindset. Interesting for for better players tester, tested, the gains are, are pretty wild. On the edge of unbelievable, but I don't know. I mean. I don't know. <laughs> Here's my two thoughts on that, just real quick. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. I mean, uh, we'll see. Bridgestone obviously has information to suggest it does, and I'm sure for some players it really, really works. However, what's interesting to me about this is it's another example of kind of this idea that we're running out of runway in certain places. And what I mean by that is, like, when graphite shafts first came out, everybody took their own time to kind of switch to them, etc. 
And, you know, if there was a mile of performance to get out of graphite shafts and drivers and fairway woods, maybe we've gone three quarters, 80%, 90% of that mile, right? Like, da 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 da. Maybe make the same arguments about some things with golf balls and equipment. And we say all those little gains are marginal, right? So it's like, okay, where else are we going to go in the equipment space where there's a full mile of runway for golfers to find benefit? And I think this is it. I think it's mental game, mental approach, things like decade, like course management, all these things. And they don't necessarily look as like performance based or super sexy or like, hey, yardage, you know, numbers like that type of stuff. But it's kind of these hidden technologies maybe in a way. And I think this is an example of kind of that next wave of where real golfers can might, might see a lot of performance gains. Maybe. Right. And I think too, look, if we're all cards on the table, right, this is a, a year, two years, two years. Again, talk about cycles, just like Vokey tour B line is on a two year cycle. Mm-hmm. And and this is a year where Bridgestone didn't have anything radically different to talk about, at least nothing sure. that, that's going to resonate with golfers. So core formulation, basically the same as the previous model. Cover, a little softer probably, but basically the same as the previous model. All of the changes are to the mantle layer, which is inarguably the hardest story to tell. Not to say it doesn't have benefit, doesn't say it. Not to say it doesn't change the performance of the ball a little bit, especially the BX, which is now Tiger's ball, right? The XS, not Tiger's ball anymore. Right. BX, taking some spin out of the long game, put a little more into the short game. So there's some stuff there. Mm-hmm. And I think it's not lost on Bridgestone that mm-hmm. putting stuff on golf balls is cool, right? Whether it's yes. a pattern, an alignment aid, mindset, you almost need to have something on the cover besides just plain white or plain yellow. So I think I think both of those things play into that as well. But I think so. It's interesting. I, I mean, I'll certainly try it and, and see, like, hey, does this, does this fundamentally make a difference for me if I go through this process of, you know, identify, validate, fire? <laughs> yeah, and I, fire. you know, and if you believe Dave Wolf, our putter guru, the Lab DF3 is going to be Lab's golf, Lab Golf's best-selling putter to date. That is a quote from him. I know, like you said, we can't talk about you know absolutely every piece of equipment that's out there, but I. So, the reason this one caught my eye a little bit is the third iteration of of the DF line um, from Lab, the two point one which people kind of looked at and yeah, it, it, it wasn't necessarily the one that you hang on your wall or, or you look at, woo, that is a clean looking, uh, butter. Yeah. I mean, the, the, it's interesting, right? Like this is, it is the shape that I associate with lab golf. Like you can say, Hey, lab golf putter, what comes into mind? It's mm-hmm. like, this is the one I've made the satellite jokes about and things like that. And so, sure. You know, you do, it's a, a smaller version of a big putter. Yeah. And so maybe, I mean, maybe that's the thing, right? Like I want to try lab, but that one's just a little too big. Uh-huh. Maybe this, maybe Dave's right. Maybe this is the one that gets people in the door. I mean, not for anything, right? But as the, as the guy who hasn't tried a lab putter yet, this is maybe the one that gets me there. Well, and here, here's why I think it should is it is, virtually identical in terms of, you know, performance stability of the larger 2.1 that it replaces, but it's much, much, much smaller at address. So things that they've kind of been able to optimize, and and, and, and I totally agree with you. I mean, just looking at, and, and maybe this is why we associate it with that particular putter, look at Lab's logo, right? I mean, it is indicative of that particular design. So I think it is a differentiator, but well, look at that. Th- yeah, look at that. <laughs> it, is, <laughs> it is based on what they say. And this is why I, I personally, that. I love, I, again, I'm a fan of, of what Sam Hahn and, and that team is doing. And I think that this might be, like you said, a lab putter that gets maybe even more of that mainstream group. And they say, okay, yep, I will go ahead and, and try it now. And maybe the 2.1 was just a little bit 
too much. I didn't love the way the, you know, maybe the Mez or the Mez Max, Max look for whatever reason, but this is the one that gets me in there. Um, I mean, again, it's a locomotive. They're not slowing down. They're just picking up speed in 2024. 2024 is a bigger year for Lab than 2023 was. I mean, look out. We're, then we're going to start talking about, like, real demonstrable market share numbers at retail that are, um, you know, pretty serious in terms of what what that company is looking to uh, to accomplish within their for sure, there's other stuff, like you said, we're going to link to all of those just so people can see them all. We would talk for days if we went through every single one, but we're not. We want to talk about the main topic, Tony. And the main topic, the biggest topic, our dear friends at the PGA show in Orlando. A lot of, a lot of years you'll write an article. I don't know if you're going to do that this time around. But we got other stuff coming. So we've got kind of like best of recaps and things like that in the pipeline. I don't need to to rehash. I don't need to talk about how you couldn't get into demo day because the Wi-Fi Let's start was there. Down and couldn't Let's get start. into demo day because the Wi-Fi was down and, and having a QR code on your phone wasn't enough. And I'm, I'm still, I'm struggling, just big picture, struggling with why I need to print a badge to get on into a golf exhibition trade show when I can get on an airplane with my phone. I got into a Guns N' Roses concert with my phone. And so like I get, oh, people want to scan your badge? Cool, let them scan my phone. Oh, maybe, I, I guess the only argument is we all need to wear name tags or something, but Christ almighty, like when you can't get into demo day because the Wi-Fi is down, when you hear about lines wrapping all around day one of the show because there aren't enough people to print the badges to the point where exhibitors are cutting to the front of the line, and we're hearing this from exhibitors that cut right. the front of the line because right. they had to get to their booth. Like, I mean, right. let's, let's get our shit together here. But again, 2024, like, uh, you know, so I'd same. like to see that process refined. So that, let's that's, talk. That's my, that's let's my back big, up. right? Let's change let's, that. Let's back <laughs> up. Let's back up. For those of you who don't know, PJ show, typically the format goes something like this, right? Uh, sometimes there's media events on Monday. Um, historically, Tour Edge had a really cool one at Lake Nona. I think that was more of a COVID casualty than anything. Um, True Temper had hosted one that we were invited to once. We were invited to that one once. Uh, Tuesday is Demo Day, which takes place at Orange County National, which is kind of a big... 360 a driving degree. range that is now right. that could barely contain the show and is now twice as big as it needs to be for that's right. Tuesday. So exhibitors, right. You can go outside demo products as, as it sounds. And then Wednesday and Thursday is, is probably what most people associate with the PJ show. That's all the stuff you see inside the convention center, all the, the booths and things. And Tuesday Here's my take. Cause I, I wasn't at demo day last year. I skipped it to go play golf. Um, I didn't miss much last year. I feel like I would have missed even less this year. I want you to think about the biggest demo day that you've seen at like a local municipal golf course. You know, you got all the manufacturers, they come out and people from maybe three, four, five courses all come out and, you know, they got the reps there. You're hitting stuff, da, 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 da. That's about what this one felt like to me. It felt yeah. like a big equipment demo day at a local golf course, whereas it used to be there were sections of this, you know, where you couldn't see like what was behind or the road or something because TaylorMade, Callaway, you know, Ping, Cobra, etc. had these, you know, had scaffolding and booths and areas where like, there are waiting lines, 30, 40 minutes to get into these things to hit some of the new. Right. Not, not to actually get into the demo day, but to actually hit the clubs. Yeah, I remember TaylorMade, it may be not its, its peak level of uh, resonating with golfers, was bragging about how long you had to, had to wait to hit their clubs. But right. um, that, that was real. And it's I think, look, yeah. it's, it's easy to want to crap all over it, but I think – I think it's just a reflection of what we saw on the inside right. and the changing nature of the show. So if I say, hey, 
what would you expect to demo at demo day? I'm going to answer for you. You're probably going to tell me golf clubs, golf shafts, things like that. That's true. I, I wouldn't expect to demo golf apparel, right? I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect to, to demo various pro shop knickknacks, trophies, things like that. And, and I wouldn't expect, I wouldn't expect to demo indoor golf technologies and simulators outdoors on the range. Right. And so as, as the show has changed to become less uh, about equipment, less about the stuff that is core to what we do, right. That's reflected in changes to demo day. And so, yeah, while I miss Uh that big, everybody is here kind of feel at demo day in the packed range. Uh That's not true of the show anymore. Like the, the show is fundamentally different in terms of who attends and, and, and in what ratios. Yeah, let's and go Let's go to that. Demo Day just reflects that. Yeah, let's go to that because that's Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, you and I both like to get to the show earlier uh, as it kind of opens. And, you know, you kind of have a sense from talking to you know, the people in the booth. Hey, how's traffic? We have our own take just from walking around how busy it seems there's actually kind of an audible hum. Like you can hear, you know, when there's that many people in that, uh, that amount of space, you just kind of get a sense for kind of how busy and, and kind of what the inner, the energy is. And I would say the energy was good. The traffic was good, but my question for you, Tony, is this still an equipment show? No, no. Uh, the way I would characterize it, it used to be. So if you were starting at, the far end, or the, I guess for me is what the near end. If you're walking in, <laughs> those who go to the show, the left side, right? <laughs> you know, right. Kind of, so if you were at the equipment show, I would characterize it like you had to walk a long way to get to apparel. Mm-hmm. And I think yes, the the simplest way to explain how things has, have changed over over the last decade. If you start at the far end now, and first mm-hmm. of all, the far end isn't nearly as far as it used to be. Right. There's more kind of wide open spaces down there. Yep. But if you're at the apparel end of the show, if you're starting at the kind of the, the far end, the last apparel booth, you yep. got to walk a long way to get to golf equipment. Correct. And so I think it, it's, it's become more of an apparel show. I think fundamentally for apparel businesses, the show makes a lot more sense than it does for golf equipment businesses proper, your mm-hmm. club companies. It's definitely become more of a technology show. The example I would give when I first started going to the show, TrackMan was there, FlightScope were there, but they weren't really considered simulator companies. They were they were true launch monitor companies that kind of moved into that sim space. Yep. Launch monitor was HD Golf, True Golf, and About Golf. Mm-hmm. That was it. Three. Mm-hmm. Now look, right? There are more. I would wager that if you went and 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 did a full and complete count, you would find that there are more companies in the simulator space. The, certainly, if you say launch monitor slash simulator space, yep. there are more companies at the show in that space than there are golf equipment companies. By so, far. Yeah, I think it, I think it, it's become more of a technology showcase. And that's fine. Like, again, as an equipment guy, I, it's not good or bad if I'm really thinking about it big picture. It just reflects the changing nature of of the golf space and and really the timing of things. So the only thing I would say is the argument I would make is that but golf equipment companies shouldn't even go. They don't need to to be there. They don't need to spend the money. Realistically, <laughs> you the don't need to be you there. Hear, you, the thing yeah. you hear over and over in every booth is, we don't write any business here. Right. Everything has been written. You're not showcasing new product. There is yeah. value. We talk about this all the time. There's, there's value in seeing people you may only see at the PGA show. Uh, sometimes at the PGA show, you see people you don't want to see. So you got to, you got to find that balance there, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I, I would say like equipment companies don't need to go. I think they're probably at least for a little while, still the anchor of the show, but we know contracts ended this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least one big one I'm aware of this was the last year. So it's going to be interesting to see what happened moving forward. But, but ultimately I think it's, it's just a different show. It is. And I'm, I'm, it's- I just, you know, everybody who goes and wants to love it just has to come to terms with that. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not ever going to be. Uh, you know what it once was. Where, you know, for some of us, uh, you think of that as there was stuff, equipment stuff at the show, like mainline equipment stuff that you had not seen, nor tested, nor hit, nor did you really have the 
you know, the inside information on what it was. Um, just a different thing. Like I said, apparel, tons of apparel. Technology, if you just want to call it, whether it's personal tech, simulators, launch monitors, range finders, range finders, etc. So stuff, that, stuff with a battery or that plugs into the wall or both. yeah. So call it tech, call that all that stuff tech. I think that is the balance of the show now. Whereas it used to be equipment. I mean, it, like I said, the equipment companies are there, but it's fair to question. Like I said. Why, other than supporting the PGA of America or existing contracts stating they had to be there, we heard a rumor, again, not confirmed, but we heard rumors that there may be even some companies, larger companies that were being paid to be there or that they were being somehow incentivized uh, to be there because we know it's expensive. Like, hey, for credibility purposes, we need to have some of these names here, so We'll allocate some resources to make sure that that happens. Um, it just, yeah, it's it's a it's a different deal. But nonetheless, we still saw stuff that was cool. We saw a ton of stuff that was cool. We have a video, the rest of our team shot, on things that they thought were cool. So I want to finish up with this, Tony. Give me your top or favorite item or items or things that you saw. And if one of them isn't a bunny suit. I did. Yeah. The, I, that was the kind of, Hey, Hey, what'd you see? And then my answer was like, well, well, I saw an Asian girl putting on a bunny suit and I, I don't know where it was going. I don't know how the story ends. I just know how, how it started. So um, I, I would assume she just hopped around the show floor <laughs> promoting a product, but uh, I hope so. Knows? Yeah. So there was that. Okay. Uh, I like it. Bunny Top suit of my list. Noted. I mean, this is this is apologies to everyone in advance. This is the most elitist, out of touch, and maybe that's my my nature at this point. But the Foresight Quad Max, top of my list. I mean, why is that? Why give me? I mean, why? Well, I mean, because one, GC Quad has remained unchanged for save some firmware updates through what is it six years? I was gonna say seven. Give was it twenty sixteen? Twenty seventeen? Six years. So, yeah. And, and this isn't a massive overhaul. The the core hardware is the same, but some new features, yep. you know, tiles, the ability for me, I think, to be able to to take the quad to the range, not not need any type of other ancillary device. So you, well, I guess, arguably, like, true story, you have to configure it before you leave, but you don't necessarily have to have your phone with you. You don't need an iPad and an app. Take it with you. Hit your shots, do what you need to do, and get your data off the machine mm-hmm. later. Use there's now onboard storage. The ability yep. to to use with swing speed training now, capture swing speed without impact. That's I think that's gonna be big for a lot of a lot of golfers. I hope, I hope that that becomes trickle down into like a GC three or a let's hope so because not everybody's pro. spending twenty two five. Yeah. And Rap Soto. Rap Soto yeah. added that capability as well. We'd be remiss mm-hmm. not to mention that. So Mm-hmm. That for me was cool. You know, I love the shoes booth. Shoes booth. Yeah, say that ten uh, times fast. Shoes booth. Spend some time <laughs> with my best friend Brooke again. Your Expensive, best friend Brooke. I mean, it just it gives you a different perspective for technology in apparel. Uh, this idea of yeah, let's let's talk about this as a tech show. Well, even on that that end that doesn't have batteries, uh-huh. there's a lot of technology. Uh, so more than you're thinking, and we're gonna talk. You know, hopefully, have and, some and more, I will uh, say and. <laughs> Loosely in the same space. I just thought the LA golf booth was really cool. It was a cool awesome. feel. And I just, as much as I struggle, like it, it pains me. Like I think a $70 golf ball is ridiculous. Yeah. And I, in what we saw in ball testing, you cannot justify $70 in my mind. All right. I said, I really, I, I like the energy of the brand and I, I just love, I mean, special place in my heart to, uh, <laughs> LA golf CEO Reed Dickens for being the one guy who will go to the PG or excuse me, the USGA and just come out and say what everybody else is thinking. And mm-hmm. basically this whole idea of a roll, rollback is stupid. And when I say everybody else, I get some of you are in favor of a rollback. I'm talking about other guys making golf balls industry wide. I guarantee yep. you promise you the statement he made, that is the prevailing sentiment across the industry. Right. LA Golf's just the only one willing to say. He just so said it like out that. loud. And last one, I think, um, 
a larger presence, a booth that I saw. I don't know if they were there last year or not, but certainly a booth that I I saw. Painter, the shoe company that's uh-huh. tested well. Yep. Uh, that was compelling. Yep. And I guess I know I just said one more thing, but the other thing. <laughs> There's spilt, always one more thing. Spilt milk. Spell that. S-P-Y-L-T milk. Caffeinated milk. I know it sounds gross or at least odd, but it's really good. Chocolate, strawberry, and I think vanilla, or maybe if maybe it's just plain milk. I don't know. Fired uh, up. It was good. The the last, well, I didn't shake it, so that last sip, which was basically a mouthful of pudding, caught me by surprise. But otherwise, User like error. User error. Very quickly, my two uh, that I'm going to add to that. Number one, Mizuno's doing this more. The limited edition Azalea irons. Those were absolutely mm-hmm. awesome looking. It, the thought they put into the box, the packaging, all of that. I don't know if the you The end that. around, right? So they're... Yeah, I got the blue ones uh, back there, which I... Love with so these we saw, azalea we saw the Japanese ones, right? They could call them Master's Edition. These uh-huh. are the Azalea because licensing rights are different here. But oh yeah. yeah. That was one. And the last one I'm gonna finish up with this. So Aratera is the name of a new shaft company. A gentleman used to work at Fujikura for well, we're gonna call it 20, 25 years. And he left Fujikura. Started his own shaft company. This is the name of it. Artera. Artera. And Artera. you may be asking yourself, hey, can I really... Is someone gonna... uh, By the way, his name is Alex D. Um, if you want to Google him, look him up. Very, very bright individual. He didn't say this. I'm saying this. I don't think he left Fujikura to make a shaft that's worse than Ventus. That's a tough that's one to be. And speaking of Ventus, right? Another oh, one more thing. Another one new more Ventus, thing. New Ventus. New Ventus. Plus. New shaft D-Locor line. Ventus plus. plus, plus. plus. Mm-hmm. Right? So this is... TR was a little bit different adaptation of the technology. This is the true sort of next Ventus. Really simple story, which I love. Ventus Blue plus same profile, which means same mm-hmm. launch characteristics, same spin profile, more speed. Mm-hmm. That's more what we're speed. Saying. So you got that, yeah. What Fujikura saying. Can the guy who worked at Fujikura for 25 years make a shaft that's better than Ventus? I cannot wait to test them and see. You can say there's non competes and, and IP stuff and whatever, but what about that IP that's in your brain? I got a what do you do about that? Shaft that? is going to be taken apart layer by layer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can almost guarantee it. Mm. Okay, and there we go, people. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. As always, golf spy T, golf spy C. Find us, follow us, ask us questions. We'll be back in a week. Until then, we out. Ah.